Good morning world. I hope you've had a beautiful sleep. Or well, you're about to have a beautiful sleep. As for me, I've hardly slept a wink. So I'm going to tell you a little story. This woman, she was out the back of her house yesterday because the front is too exposed and the area she lives in is a little bit full of crime right now. Right now. So it's a bit dangerous for her this woman to go out the front of smoke during the darker hours of the night. She came inside. She walked past the perp and all of a sudden she described this loud voice, loud ugly voice is what she described it as, yelling abuse about being a white supremacist, about how family was racist. about how she's supposedly meant to be mentally sick like a mother. Her family's trash. She doesn't pack the dishwasher. When apparently the dishwasher stuff started prior to all this drama, if you could put it that way, because the woman is disabled and has a very sore back. So in tow, supposedly, the man said to the son, you're gonna have to start doing a bit more around the house. And this was due cause apparently, to make him pack and unpack the dishwasher. But, she was being discriminated against because the sink was full of her cups and plates. And when I say full, from what I can gather, she's saying that there's probably about five mugs of coffee, a couple of small plates. Apparently this is over a period of a week. She doesn't eat much apparently and doesn't drink much. She does, she drinks it from bottles or she only eats small pigeon amounts apparently. That's what this story entails. Domestic violence, the discrimination, the abuse by the sounds of it. That she suffers at the hand of a repeated perpetrator over a period of say 27 years by the sounds of it the victim has had to um, suffer the wrath of this ugly person and one thing's led to the other Perp has physically assaulted this person and been charged with it and fined in the past. So that was the story apparently that unfolded last night. I'll let you decide for yourself whether that's fiction or not fiction non-fiction as I call it. And I mean, 
The scenario unfolded over a period of an hour where this perpetrator kept hurling abuse and the victim was so shaky she apparently made a cup of coffee to settle her nerves but on the way from the kitchen to the bedroom she dropped the cup it broke and coffee went everywhere yeah well what can I say Fiction or non-fiction? Are you a coffee drinker? Are you a hot Milo drinker? Are you a cold Milo drinker? Are you a tea drinker? I'll let you judge for that. Besides that, it's been raining for a whole day yesterday and a whole night yesterday. The garden is blooming. Absolutely blooming. All my marigolds over a period of say four months have just sprouted up and they're getting some buds on them now. Look at this beautiful, beautiful tree that I plucked from the side of the road. It was just like this one. Now she's blooming strong. The gardenia that I purchased. A few more clouds in the horizon yonder way. Look at that beautiful tree. So that's the good morning story for you. It's up to you to decide whether the story is true or false. As I say, fiction, non-fiction. Maybe I should make it a regular story time for you all. Kiss and the nail. I'm quite swollen in the morning time, I think, because my body hasn't been coping. I just hope it's not my kidneys or my liver function. By the time my meds wear off in the morning I'm in or at night I'm in severe pain. I can barely walk. I now use a red walker. Compliments of Joan Gibson. If you're up there in heaven Joan I hope you don't mind. I don't truly know how you feel about me. But our visits, when I did visit with Lauren and Bambi, were joyful, as far as I could tell. But you were a good person to hide the trees. So I don't truly know how you feel, but got your walker now and your stools my son sits at the breakfast bar every morning thinking of you when he sits on the stools every morning without fail he sits on one of your stools one or the other there's two and the bears thank you for letting me have them back Joan We kept them for years, just like you kept a photo of Puasa. Baby Puasa and 12-year-old Lauren taken at the hospital shortly after birth. Thank you for all your many years and thank you for showing your daughter, your only daughter, the love she deserved. and for telling her the truth of your regrets. So thank you, Joan. Rest in peace. 
and I hope you are in heaven and I hope you're with Rob and Rocky, your mum and dad, their mum and dad and everyone else that passed away before you. Rip Joan, rip. taking a photo first and I usually edit all this stuff and I put music in the background so no one can hear no no don't you worry they don't get missed with me that's why I can talk when I'm doing it oops and I listen very like, like for 20 minute video it probably takes me an hour all up to listen to it but no, don't you worry. It's getting cold, isn't it? I'm going to get a sh No, but I'm going to go in a minute anyway, Shazza. And I'll put the heater on. The birds at Sharon. You can see the magpie, he's actually put bread over here. Where's my finger? Can't find my finger. There it is, there. And then he's going back over here. And let's watch him, he'll take it back over to his pile. There he is, he's putting it over near his pile. He's getting a stockpile closer. Oh, there's another bird, a noisy miner eating it now. Oh. Oh. These birds. Yeah. Yep. I'm heating it up, so do you want another one while I'm with it? 